Because alopecia areata can range so significantly in severity, there are many possible treatment options. Most therapies for alopecia areata are designed to either dampen the immune system's inflammatory response or to divert the immune system from the hair follicle by creating a distracting event which requires the immune system's attention. Minoxidil is a medication that was originally designed to treat high blood pressure, though it has since fallen out of favor for blood pressure control due to the advent of newer, more effective therapies, it continues to be a mainstay in the treatment of alopecia due to its ability to prolong the growth phase of the hair cycle, amongst other benefits. Minoxidil can be applied topically as a 5% solution or foam and may cause contact dermatitis, pruritus, or hypertrichosis which is increased hair growth on the face or body. Patients may also experience a temporary increase in hair shedding. Oral minoxidil is an alternative to topical minoxidil, though it has a more extensive side effect profile. The most common side effect is hypertrichosis and is seen in about 15% of patients. Other side effects include lightheadedness, ankle swelling, tachycardia, headache, eyelid swelling, and insomnia. These side effects occur on a predictable timeline, making monitoring straightforward for patients and providers. Tachycardia, if present, will occur during the first 24 hours, lightheadedness within the first week, headache from day 15 to 20, and all other side effects from day 45 to 90. Corticosteroids are immune modulators, which are regularly used to treat alopecia areata. They can be applied topically, as a solution, or intralesionally. When applied topically, side effects can include folliculitis. Rarely, skin atrophy and telangiectasias are observed. Corticosteroids may be administered intralesionally, as triamcinolone acetonide injections. Common side effects include injection site pain, localized skin atrophy, and telangiectasia development. The risk of these adverse events occurring can be mitigated by limiting the number of injections per site, diluting corticosteroids to lower concentrations, and avoiding superficial intraepidermal injections. Lack of significant improvement after six months of therapy is an indication for discontinuation. Diphenylcyclopropanone, better known as DPCP, is a topical sensitizer initially applied to the scalp by your dermatologist to treat alopecia areata. It works by creating a localized immune reaction wherever it is applied, distracting the immune system away from the hair follicle. As a result, patients who use DPCP may experience a vesicular eruption or bolus reaction, cervical lymphadenopathy, scalp and facial edema, or contact urticaria. Changes in skin pigmentation, especially in darker-skinned patients, has also been observed. Because the medication is intentionally irritating, patients, providers, and anyone else in close contact should avoid directly touching the scalp. JAK inhibitors are selective modulators of the immune system, which work by targeting the JAK-STAT pathway. They are one of the most promising new therapies being studied for the treatment of alopecia areata. Because they alter the immune system, potential side effects include infection, bone marrow disturbance, and reactivation of dormant viruses. They also carry a risk of malignancy. They may also increase risk of adverse cardiovascular events. Patients on JAK inhibitors require initial screening for tuberculosis and hepatitis infections. Providers should regularly order a complete blood count, complete metabolic panel, and lipid panel.